Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this podcast, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. The postcards from this episode will be viewable on Instagram at Sent from Disneyland or on my website, sentfromdisneyland.com. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from patreon.com. You can join in and receive mail from my desk or for my trips to Disneyland. I'm currently working on some new patron benefits. Patrons can sign up for as little as a dollar per month. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Monica Seats Vega, Scott Booker, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Scott Cagle, Mary Henderson, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons, series inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Grace Coat, Ben and Noel Bruning, and Patty Wool. B ticket patrons, the Disney Rewind Podcast, and Jeff and Paige Orton. And to the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angelique and the Block, and the All Aboard Podcast. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has the Jungle Cruise loading dock. You can see the Mekong Maiden filled with guests coming in to disembark. On the left you can see a houseboat, and on the right you can see a man wearing a red shirt and a straw hat. On the back it reads, The Explorer's Boat. The Explorer's Boat in Adventureland nears dangerous waters as lifelike crocodiles approach and hippos lurk around the bend in Disneyland's Rivers of the World. It's postmarked November 26, 1957, with an Anaheim cancel and a two-cent red Jefferson postage stamp. Scott number 1033. I assume they visit the park on Monday, November 25th, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. The weather was a high of 85 and a low of 44. Park attendance that day was 2,619. It's addressed to a Mrs. M. Cancia Milla of San Jose, California. It reads, 11.25.57 Dear Nana, Having a wonderful time, seeing Disneyland now, leaving for Las Vegas tomorrow, love, Phil, and Carol. Since I have a friend who listens to this show and is a patron heading to Disneyland for her honeymoon this week, I thought I'd give her a little something special to listen about for the queue of her favorite attraction, in hopes that she can share it with her new husband while waiting in the queue for the Jungle Cruise. I was reading The Jungle Cruise, The Wild History of Walt's Favorite Ride by Dr. Skipper and was amazed by the history and detail of the Jungle Cruise queue. This postcard shows the original queue, all on ground level, with a second-story lookout room unavailable to guests. The original queue and building are about 20 feet further out from the jungle as it is today. The queue was just a line that would wrap around a small pond next to the loading area. This small pond was home to live baby alligators for a while. They had been purchased from a local alligator farm. The trouble was the small reptiles were able to climb the rope fence around the pond and escape into the jungle. They would be caught and brought back after finding some snacks floating in the jungle river. This feature was taken out of the queue quickly, after too much time and energy was spent keeping the park safe from the alligators and for the alligators. Since the Jungle River Cruise was the only attraction in Adventureland from opening day until 1962, the queue would fill up easily and went its way into the hub. Until 1962 and the addition of the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, the queue would fill up the space from the dock to the end of Adventureland, where the new Adventureland Treehouse is today. Another thing you can see on this postcard is the original Jungle Cruise boats only have one place to enter and exit the boat, unlike the current boats, which have two entrances. Looking at both postcards for this episode, the original queue to the side of the building had a themed tropical thatched roof, and guests could watch boats leave the dock on their Jungle River expedition. Although the queue was shifted with the addition of the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, the big change for the queue would happen in the early 90s. Enfield Post has a new Instagram filled with great deals. Follow EP Sunday Sales to check out some great vintage stamps ready to use on outgoing postcards and letters. This week I saw some amazing full sheets, one with Humphrey Bogart and a sheet of colorful glass bottles, perfect for a splash of color on a drab envelope. That's EP Sunday Sale for some great deals on stamps. Or you can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D. 
P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has the queue of the Jungle Cruise, including the loading dock, where the Ganges Gal is taking on passengers for a trip around the jungle rivers of the world. In the foreground, you can see a boat with some tropical fruits. On the back, it reads, From this tropical dock, passengers board the Adventureland boats for a safari trip through a wonder of nature's own design down the jungle rivers of the world. It's postmarked July 11, 1961, with the Los Angeles Employ the Handicap Ability County Cancel and a four-cent red Lincoln postage stamp, Scott number 1036. I assume they visited the park on Monday, July 10th, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to midnight. The weather was a high of 80 and a low of 65. Parkinson's that day was 25,826. It's addressed to a Miss Fanny Palaz of Rutherford, New Jersey. It reads, Hello Fanny, Mary, and Anne. How are you? I'm having a wonderful time. My people are taking all over. Love to all. Anna, miss you all. The addition of the Indiana Jones attraction created some major changes to Adventureland and the Jungle Cruise. When it was finally decided that the Indy ride would be built in Adventureland, Frontierland was also considered, Imagineers started looking at how to move the Jungle Cruise queue and to make an entrance for the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. The other overhaul was the theme of Adventureland. To make the Indy attraction fit in best, the look of the boats, skippers, and new queue building were themed to the 1940s. The new queue building received a longer backstory. The main building was meant to look like it was built in 1911 as the last civilized outpost in the jungle. In 1928, it was abandoned and the jungle took over, allowing Imagineers to give the building some natural wear and tear. Then, to tie it back into the 1940s style of Indiana Jones, the skippers came by to take over the building and offer jungle cruises to guests. Originally, guests would enter the building and take a quick ride into the boat maintenance room. This room had a slanted floor and looks as if one or more boats have hit the side of the building on their way out of the dock. This room is no longer part of the queue and was repurposed to be the Temple of the Forbidden Eye Fast Pass Distribution Room. The next room of the queue has vintage-looking photos of skippers and blueprints of the Jungle Cruise boats. Some of the decorations are actual blueprints aged to fit the theming. Guests then walk by the back side of the ticketing office. This office used to have an antique logbook that skippers would sign after completing their training. Guests continue past a storage room including a chess set made from a chessboard and found objects as chess pieces including bullets as pawns and other jungle treasures filling out the rest of the pieces. If the queue is long, guests head upstairs and under a toucan, which was a Mark Davis addition to the original attraction in the 1960s. The toucan was removed from the attraction during the Indiana Jones edition and was placed in the queue. Guests could then be shuffled on the roof area of what is now the stroller parking for Adventureland. This area was used as a performance space for a steel drum band but it caused even more congestion in the small Adventureland area. The doors and crates nearby were used to store the musicians' instruments between sets. Guests continue back into the building and see the infirmary with all the medical supplies available in the jungle, then onto the radio and dispatch room with a lookout over the launching area for the Jungle Cruise boats. When the new queue first opened, an animatronic cobra would peek over the luggage stacked near the dispatch room. This feature was taken out of the queue quickly. The radio room for KNGO Radio, would be the broadcast center for the queue's music and announcements. Guests would then walk next to the captain quarters, filled with animal skulls and books, and then into the bug room, filled with entomology specimens and a real python skin. Most of the props and set dressings are fabricated, but the python skin is real. The queue then leads back downstairs, and guests are led to the back side entrance of the boat, or the middle entrance. Guests are then off, then guests are off on their adventure into the jungle rivers of the world. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learned about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has Bambi, looking at a butterfly that landed on his tail. 
On the left side of the card, you can see Thumper with two of his siblings. It's postmarked November 10th, 2022, with a Trenton, New Jersey cancel and a Red Barn Forever postcard postage stamp, Scott number 5547. It reads, November 8th, 2022. Hello and greetings from Trenton in New Jersey. I've been to Disney World twice in 2018. I've gone to the Magic Kingdom in Florida with a guide and it really sucked. Then, in 2020, I went to California with my friends and visited Disneyland and Adventure Park. I truly had a blast and can't wait to go there again. I'd like to visit Florida parks on my own and give them a proper chance too. Happy postcrossing, Gozia. Thank you so much for the postcard, Gozia. I enjoy going to Disneyland and California Adventure on a regular basis. I visit Florida and its parks every handful of years. It's nice to go with a guide. Earlier in October, I was the guide for my mother, my aunt, and my grandmother as we toured around the Disney parks. It was also funny to get this card with Bambi and Thumper, as I just returned from MouseCon in Concord, where the two headliners were the voices of Bambi and Thumper. I had a great time at the event and hung out with some old friends and some new ones, and I look forward to the next one. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard address to sent from Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guests of the Sent from Disneyland podcast.